Hi there, and welcome to Valid of Vietnam. My name is James Scott at the Sacramento Public Library. Valid of Vietnam is a joint venture between the Sacramento Public Library and the Vietnam Veterans of America, Sacramento Valley's Chapter 500. It's our intent to trace the arc of experience experienced by our local Vietnam veterans as they went from the Sacramento Valley to Vietnam and then back again. Today's guest, Caleb Sonny Bradford, spent one tour of duty uh, in Vietnam with the 25th Infantry Division near Cu Chi. Sonny, thanks a lot for being on Valid of Vietnam, and of course, welcome home. Nice to meet you, Scott. All right. All right. So um, basically, uh, you are the quintessential uh, California kid. Uh, grew up in California, um, family uh, based in Oakland, but after the war, 50s and 60s, we see a huge upsurge in folks moving out to the ruralities of, of California, in particular Butte County. You grew up in Oroville, mm -hmm. which is in Butte County. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about your life as a kid in, in Oroville and the things you enjoyed doing. Well, I grew up in Oroville. I was uh, the oldest, oldest son uh, in, in Oroville. Went to Orville Union High School. I uh, I was in the grew up as a young boy, a Cub Scout, and uh, had the opportunity to learn how to camp and hunt and stuff like that in Orville. Orville was a nice little community, quiet, quiet little place. You know, no, hardly no crime or anything. Little, little secluded little place, and, and I feel real comfortable there. And I did a lot of farm farm work, and I worked at the Oroville Dam back in the '60s. And it was one of the biggest earth build dam in the world. Yeah, and and we had talked a little bit about that. So it's this this massive dam, uh, tallest earth built build in dam. the world, uh, or largest earth built, tallest in in the country. Mm -hmm. Looking back, tell us about you know, your experiences working with the dam and the kind of pride it must give you. Yeah, you know, just, you know, give you the, the feeling that you've done something. You know, it made you feel like, hey man, this is something that I had participated in, you know, and uh, it makes you feel good to go back and look and see how wonderful it, you know, it turned out to be, you know. Right. So, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, so uh, starting in the 60s, um, and you know, a lot like our local dams here, Folsom and, and Nimbus, it's, yeah. it's not going anywhere. It's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be around for a long time, yeah. so it's a real symbol of Californians coming yeah. together to make something yeah. you know, happen. So you worked on the dam, yeah. um, and then, uh, you know, we had m talked a little bit about in pre-production, and I, I, I hadn't actually told you I was going to ask this, but you also, you guys had a good time going down to Chico because Chico, Chico State had Co yes, college Chico had parties, yeah, right? Yeah, a lot of parties, a <laughs> lot of parties. Yeah. So you guys would go down there, yeah. so, you know, a little extra yeah. fun. Um, so, of course, we w reached the mid-60s into the late 60s, and the world is changing. Um, the U.S. is becoming more involved in Southeast Asia, um, and so there's a commitment. There's a commitment of money, um, but most importantly, there's a human commitment yeah. that, that affects yeah. so many of us. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about your pathway from from Oroville and, and when you knew you were going to be drafted. Well, uh, I was working, like I said, I was working at the dam. Then you know I got a notice that you know my uh, draft papers and you know it's kind of different you know here I'm getting papers to you know go in the army so I went to Oakland you know Oakland Duction Center and uh, had to stay in Oakland a couple of days to take tests and right. you know seeing where they were gonna send you and the last stages they uh, send half of us to Fort Polk, Louisiana for basic training, AIT training at Tigerland. And man, you're talking about training. Mm -hmm. Man, they, they, they took us to, you know, some real tense training. Right. To, to, you know, learn the, the elements that's in Vietnam, right. you know. And um, 
So we trained, trained there in Louisiana, came home, had a two weeks leave, and then they sent us back to Oakland to get, sh you know, get shipped to Vietnam. And, uh, okay, so you're, you're hopping a United Airlines plane. Yeah, United. It's pretty, yeah, 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 pretty common to yeah. charter those planes and you head into to Benoit, um, South Vietnam and Benoit is an air base. It's just north of Saigon. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you're, the plane lands, you're in Vietnam. Tell us about your, your first reaction to that door opening up but you know and just outside. you know just flying you know just flying across that pacific you know yep. looking out that window seeing all that water and notice it's a long ways from home hey, and prior to going to um to fort polk had you ever been on a plane before no i haven't yeah, yeah. no i haven't first so it was time. the first time first and time then, flying and then right. the, and flying that long distance right and then oh by the way we're going to send you across you know, yeah. thousands of miles. Yeah, of just you know, and you ocean. get, you know, you got a lot of butterflies and oh, yeah. a lot of tension right. going on. You know, because you never been, you know, never been that far away from home. But I never been that far from Orville. Right. That's known, going overseas. You know, and flying across that water, looking down, man, it's wow, man, where are we going? Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, I prayed, man, I said, hope I make it back home. Mm -hmm. You know, and everybody's quiet. Well, we flew on this continental and then it had all kind of, you know, people flying going to Europe and stuff right. like this and stuff. Time we flew into Vietnam, these ladies, stewardess told us that, you know, I would be the privilege to come back in a year and take you back home, take y'all guys back home. And uh, man, that made me feel really, really warm that that they cared, you know what I'm saying? So, they, so that was a good relief. Yeah, yeah, and it's probably the kind of thing you want to hear. Yeah, you yeah. Step out into the heat. And yeah, yeah. All of that. Yeah, yeah. We flew. We got to Vietnam at night. They had to uh, turn the lights off the plane because you know, because they're still firing tracers right. at the plane. So they had to escort us off fast as they could. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, got off. Man, it's just the uh, the heat. And uh, just the smell of that, that country, man. It, I mean, never smelled anything like that in your right. life, you know. And uh, it was just a, a very, very difficult circumstance at that time. Right. And, and you'd mentioned um, that, uh, you know, you're essentially flying into the third world. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe in parts of Saigon, um, you know, still aspects of colonial French yeah. city, you know, yeah. there's some infrastructure, but, you know, there's no running water. No running you know. water, no, no, no. Um, So people have to dispose of all sorts of oh, things. Of the waste, fire. you know, then you have to burn it with diesel, and you right. know, and that's, right. you, know, you know, you never see nothing like this, so, you know. Right, so, so that's, that's your you welcome. Had. Yeah. That's yeah. your welcome. Yeah. So you're in, you're in country now, and um, you're with the 25th, the, uh, you know, tropical lightning AKA the, the electric strawberry, uh, depicted in in Hollywood with the, the platoon, but but the movie platoon. But mm -hmm. you guys uh, go from Benoit to Kuchi mm -hmm. and you settle in and, and you're a rifleman at this time. At this time, yeah. And uh, tell us uh, if you can a bit about your time around Kuchi. Well flew uh, when we flew into Kuchi, I think it was about ten of us. Went to Coochie and the other guys went to other different, like the Wolfhounds, uh, Big Red One, you know. Easy Smith was a Wolfhound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, uh, so we, when the time we got into Coochie, the base camp in Coochie, wasn't nobody there but the cooks, the mailman, and stuff was there. All yeah. the rest of the guys was out fighting. Yeah. So we had to stay about a week there in Coochie. Then we had to go to classes, you know, a couple classes, brief us up on, the, you know, the the terrain and and all this, you know. Now, so, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong here, but Coochie is kind of known for its tunnel networks. Yeah, yeah, Coochie is nothing but tunnels. I mean, uh, I mean, this whole Coochie is just underground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, you can go miles and miles in a tunnel under in the Coochie. Yeah. 
Right. So um, that that's another variable, you know, as you guys are doing your job, yeah. um, as you go out. So you'd mention, um, of course, Coochie, um, Iron Triangle, Black Virgin, Black Mountain, Virgin Mountain, Hobo Woods, Hobo Woods, if Bulloy you talk, Woods. Right. If yeah. you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, the, the Black Triangle, uh, I mean, the Black Virgin Mountain was a big, big, big mountain, and it's black. And the, uh, the Air Force is on top of this mountain, and the VC is inside the mountain. So the Air Force can't go down, and the, and the VC can't go up. So we had to camp around this big old mountain, man. Big, huge mountain. Stay black. That's why they call it Black Virgin right. Mountain. Right. And man, it is a lot of firefights. Get you know, late at night, man. We sometimes go two and three days fighting. You know, right. it's tracers. You see the number of tracers. Right. So I've seen pictures of Black Virgin Mountain and the 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 U.S. presence that's on top of yeah, the mountain. Yeah. 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 And but then you've got basically this ant-like. Yeah. Network of yeah. tunnels. Tunnels in the going in itself. that mountain. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's it's an amazing it's yeah. an amazing scenario. So um, so you you guys are truly in the thick of it um, with with of course Coochie, Black Virgin Mountain, uh, Golden Triangle, definitely Hobo Woods. Have heard a bit about ho Hobo Woods. Y you you guys were really active. And you personally spent a lot of time walking point, walking point. Well, uh, not at first, not at first. You know, I think I was in the rear okay. with the M16. And just about every firefight we get in, every chance we get, we gotta sit down and make sure the magazine, the bullets is clean. Mm -hmm. You get a little particle on that bullet and jam that gun. And a lot of firefights we got in that M16 would jam on it. And I just didn't, you know, I didn't feel safe carrying it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So after we went back to the base camp, I told the lieutenant, I said, look, I'd like to get another gun. Mm -hmm. I got the 90 millimeter bazooka, which I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I got this bazooka and I carried the rear. Right. And I was shooting shotgun shell rounds. Okay. And this bazooka. And the VC really wanted to take me out because I can take you know, a number of them out with this bazooka shooting this shotgun right. shell rounds. It's the same round. thing if somebody was carrying the M60 it, machine M60 gun. M60 machine gun. Right. They trying to get that out to, you know, get that out first, you know. So and that's you know, that's how I got hit. Okay. You know, okay. but in the meantime, when I carry the M16, that's when I volunteered to walk point. Right. And I don't know, I just had a feeling inside of me. I don't know what it was, it was God or something, but I wanted to protect my men. Right, right. So you, you had grown, you had, let's also kind of set up the chronology. You'd arrived in July, mm -hmm. okay, 1967. And so you've had time to, um, you know, mesh with the unit and you know, make these relationships with these with these fellows mm -hmm. that you're mm -hmm. with, and so, you know, the bonds are really really strong. Plus, faith. Mm -hmm. You know, your faith you has been a you huge part of your life, yeah. and so those things coming together um, kind of pushed you to walk point. You know, I think typically points walked by folks that are a bit smaller in stature. Yeah, um, and you're you know you're strong, imposing, six foot three fella, um, but you felt like it, it's something. That you needed to do something had to do you know right. yeah and uh and i walked it you know and me and uh another guy palomo he was a uh, mexican mm -hmm. he was a lot smaller you know about five six or something he's a lot smaller he walked right and i walked left and um that's how that's how that's how i got hit but i'm gonna tell you about the m16 when I was walking in the Hobo Woods, mm -hmm. we got pinned down for a couple of days. And uh, then uh, I think a thing came over that it's a hospital underground with glass doors and surgery room. So we quit fighting, quit fighting and got machetes and chainsaws and 
shovels and trying to find his interest in the ground mm -hmm. with his hospital with glass. So we took us about uh, two or three weeks to find this little hole in the ground. Man, we yeah. blew it open, man. I think that that hospital was about two or three miles long <sighs> with glass doors and surgery room. Yeah. Wasn't no bodies in it, it was just weapons uh, wrapped up in axle grease, some kind of big thick grease with with light uh, rain, you know, plastic wrapped around mm -hmm. it, thousands mm -hmm. of weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was that was nice that we confiscate that, you know, because right. that was the headquarters to, you know, to get down, get weapons and fire at us, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, exactly. And so again, we go back to that, that almost legendary network um, that surrounds Coochie and the hard work yeah. that went into yeah. to penetrating that, yeah. that whole thing. Yeah. Um, so, so moving on, um, you, you get there in July 67, December uh, 67, you're, you're hit um, and you're sent to Japan uh, for care. And, and that's basically um, gonna send you home, more or less. So mm -hmm. you spend time in Japan uh, it, at a hospital there, and then you're also then sent back to San Francisco, mm -hmm. where you know there are specialists yes, and yeah, everything. Yeah. Tell us, tell us a bit about that transition back. So you're done in in San Francisco, and then moving on. So you, you've left the country. Tell us about your feelings well, at this point. Leaving yeah, after Vietnam. you know, after I got hit, and they sent me to Twelfth Evac Hospital in South Vietnam. I was kind of out of it because yeah. I got hit with RPG. I got hit in the head with the RPG, but hit my steel pot. Mm -hmm. right. And that's why faith in God come in. At. It just hit my steel pot and the fragments from that rocket got me in both of my arms. Mm -hmm. And uh, just tore up, I got 50 some scars on one arm and quite a bit on the other arm. And so they sent me to Japan for skin grafts, you know, a lot of surgery. Went there and I'm, you know, still, my, I'm still out of it. Right. You know, I'm still dazed, mm -hmm. you know. And they did the surgery in uh, San Francisco, I mean in uh, Japan. Then they flew me to Letterman General Hospital in San Francisco where they did some more little surgery. I stayed there till they got finished with my surgery there. And then they let me release me to Fort Carson, Colorado. Okay. So that's when I finished my tour and uh, discharge out of the service okay. in Colorado. So um, I've been, actually I have family in Colorado Springs, but I've been there a couple yeah. times. And uh, what do you think of those mountains? I, you, know, I, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, growing up in Oroville, I've never been around snow. I've seen it, you know, seen it in pictures and yeah. TVs. But when I went to uh, Colorado, man, I seen snow and I just played it and I loved it. <laughs> and I just covered myself in the snow. Yeah, and it must have been a culture shock because you go, you know, from steamy, um, you know, areas around Saigon to... Yeah, that monsoon, that, yeah. Uh, that, that, that humidity. Right, and, oh, then, and then all of a sudden you're, you're in one of the driest parts of the world yeah. in Colorado. I mean, that yeah. must have been like, wow, yeah. a jolt to the system. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So, so you're, you're home and you transition uh, eventually back into civilian civilian life. Um, tell us a bit about that, if you could. Well, after I, you know, I uh, got discharged, uh, I got out and I had to rehabilitate myself, you know, try to get back into the society, you know, tr trying to get a job. Jobs was hard. It was hard coming back from Vietnam because did you they, feel welcome? Did you no, feel never so? felt welcome. They they looked at us like we had dirt on us. We, you know, baby killers. Uh, you know, I mean, they they did us pretty bad. You right. know, coming back. So, came back, man. It was hard to try to find. You know, especially in Oroville, it's it's, it's not a town with a lot of work and stuff is going on. You know, so it was kind of work. So I did a little farm work, a little work here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, try to survive. And then um, eventually I left out of Oroville and I think I moved to Sacramento. Okay. And you know, a little more 
opportunities to get a job and, and right. work. So. And this is in the the seventies. Yeah, 80s. in the seventies. Now, one one um, recurring um, element of your life, it's center of your life, is your faith. Yes. Um, it steadies you. It gives yeah. you strength. Um, tell us. Tell us about the importance of faith. Well, if you don't have faith, you don't have anything. You got to believe that it is it is a higher power. It is somebody's watching over you, and you got to believe that He will protect you right. Right. from all your troubles and things. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, then the question would be, um, you know, you you may have left Vietnam, but have you ever stopped walking point? A huge no. part of your life is volunteerism. It's no. been a cleansing thing for you. Could yeah. you talk about that? Yes, I can. Since you know, since I came back, I, I like helping other people. I love doing things for people. I'm a people person, and uh, I just like to be out front. You know, uh, making people smile is really not that bad. You know, trying to you know put a smile on their face. And I go, you know, like I work for the food every Thursday for the food locker okay. to pass our food for the homeless. Uh, and that's at St. John's? St. John Lutheran Church. That's right, on yeah, L Street. Okay. On L. Okay. I've been doing that for about five, about eight years. Yeah. And I enjoy it. And I'm, I, you know, I really do enjoy this, you know, to help other people because it's, it's a lot of people out there that just don't have it, you know. Right. And just doing something, just giving back to to the society, you know. Yeah, and, and you are, ver uh, very much a person in, who enjoys conversation, yeah. and you you also spend time in Oak Park yeah. um, at the uh, Women's, the Women's Civic, Civic Center. And yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, well, I've been going to the Women's Civic Center oh, about pretty close to the same time I worked for the Food Locker, and I'm I've met some these ladies, mm -hmm. you know, they're in the late '90s, yeah. and I love them. I yeah. love them, and. Uh, I love doing things for them, you know, go to store, help them and things, and and uh, it just give me a thrill, man, just yeah. that I can do these for these ladies. Yeah. My mother passed with, you know, at a young age, and, and uh, you know, and I loved my mom, and I adopted these ladies to be my mom. I guess so. Yeah. So they they my mom, <laughs> you That's know. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. So you've got this very full life of, of volunteerism. Um, and then, you know, you also spent a lot of time working at your church um, yeah, in North yeah. Sac, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, you're the greeter. Yeah, Calvary Christian Center, yeah. yeah. And you're my you're pastor, uh, Philip G. Legault. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm a greeter, been a greeter there for oh, about 10, 15 years. And yeah. I really enjoyed that, yeah. Again, being out, being out front, yeah. being out front. So, um, so much has been written about the Vietnam War throughout time. Um, some very scholarly things, um, lots of popular published stuff. Um, and as consumers, we've we've seen it all. We see them in our, in our wonderful libraries, uh, Amazon, um, wherever else. But um, you actually came across a book. Um, Couple years ago mm -hmm. in Davis, mm -hmm. is is a Vietnam veteran who looks at these books that you know we see, and we read them, and they're meaningful to us. Mm -hmm. But we we weren't in Vietnam. We we can we can try to, you know, guess what it may have been like. Mm -hmm. But as as a veteran mm -hmm. who spent such an intense period in Vietnam, who takes a look at you know the book like you brought in for us. Oh, we get it. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, tell us, tell us a little bit about these books and what they mean for you, and and what you yeah. think when you look at a book like this. This book, this book here. I, uh, I think I was in Davis, okay. and I went to the library in Davis, and I found this book, and it's it, it goes all the way back to the French. Okay. All the way through the wars, pictures, nice color pictures to tell you a lot about Vietnam. A lot about the French War. You got wonderful stories in this book right here, and it's a nice book to have uh, to read. And, and you know, so how do you 
I mean, can you look at it without being sent all the way back to well, Hobo Woods? Yeah, 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 it does. It yeah. does. It does. It puts you back there. But it keeps a connection for you. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. It keeps a connection. Yeah. So um, the library, the Sacramento Public Library, we've got yeah. so many a different... Wonderful book. Exactly. Wonderful book. And we have so many strong collections within the library. And I can guarantee you should definitely come in and take a look at our mm -hmm. Vietnam collection, Southeast Asia collection. Yeah. Um, a lot of depth there and a lot of meaningful stuff. Mm -hmm. So with that said, uh, mm -hmm. this concludes uh, this episode of Ballad of Vietnam. Uh, I'm James Scott, uh, and for uh, uh, Jerry Ward, our producer, for Christy Dentry, Bob Tribe, our interviewers um, and researchers, for uh, in India Curry, um, also a producer. Um, I want to thank Sonny thank you, sir. for coming thank in. You. Thank you so much thank for you, all you, your Scott. service and thank welcome home. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. So with that said, um, that's going to include Valid of Vietnam. We will see you next time at our next episode. Mm.